Hey, good morning around. Good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich, or WX Brad, if you follow me on Twitter. Uh, the situation is unfolding, unfortunately, exactly how I expected last night. There is some early severe weather, though the, the scary part about this is the tornadoes we've seen in eastern Tennessee and northern Alabama aren't even the main threat that's going to come in later today. Now, for the Carolinas, the threat you're seeing right now, the showers and a couple of thunderstorms, that's the actual warm front moving through. When you look at the temperatures, it's in the 40s and 50s along the warm front, but you don't have to go too far to the south where temperatures recover quickly into the 70s. So the stuff you're seeing in North Carolina right now that we're seeing, it's really not the major severe stuff. That's really just uh, kind of the leading edge of the warmer air. In fact, if I look at the Let's take a look at the uh, dew points right now. This will give you a good idea on where that moist, unstable air mass is. You can see it's building up across Charlotte. There's a little wedge in against the mountains, which for right now is going to protect the mountains, at least momentarily. But look at this big plume of high dew point air. These are dew points not only in the 60s, but the mid to upper 60s, if not 70 degrees. So when you look at that STP, you've heard me talk a lot about that. That's that significant tornado parameter. Look what's going on. Right now, from Paducah to Evansville to Nashville to Memphis, uh, STPs are running between 7 and 8. Okay, that's about as high as my chart goes on the left. Uh, that That's huge. That means long-track EF2 plus tornadoes. And that's really the thing we need to worry about today. The tornadoes that do form are not going to be measly little brief spin-ups. They are going to be long-track monsters that will produce devastation if you do not get below ground or into a sturdy, sturdy structure on the lowest level in the interior room. You need to do that today if you live in Tennessee, Georgia, uh, Kentucky, even southern parts of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and maybe even eventually the Western Carolinas. And the reason I say that is the Storm Prediction Center has updated their severe weather outlook for today. And when you look at it, the moderate risk is actually getting closer to the southwest corner of North Carolina and all of our areas is under a slight risk for isolated severe storms. Now when you look at the tornado threat it's going to peak to our west but you can see right here in Asheville the 5% tornado threat has moved into North Carolina over Charlotte it's about 2%. What I'm hoping is going to happen here in the Charlotte area and points east is that this thing is going to come together as a big squall line and become more of a damaging wind threat. While I don't want to see damaging winds, that's going to be a whole lot better than the severe weather threat. The thing that we have to watch for, though, is like what we're seeing in Alabama and Tennessee, is isolated storms developing out ahead of the main line that move through these small supercells or discrete supercells could end up being the ones that produce tornadoes over our area. So that's a trend I'm going to watch carefully. The timing for us is basically any time today through 7 a.m. tomorrow. I can't be more specific because we don't know what's going to develop down here. This leading edge line could be here as soon as 4 or 5 this afternoon, depending on how things unfold. And then the main line, which is going to develop back in here, uh, will arrive in the pre-dawn hours Saturday morning. So just to show you some of the indices and some of the stuff that is just really off the charts, I'll turn off all the warnings right now and we'll look at some of the model data. That's the STP currently. This is the uh, moist unstable cape or that thunderstorm fuel. You see it peaking big time. Um, the shear is absolutely ridiculous. The one kilometer, uh, zero to one kilometer shear, uh, this is just off the charts here across areas of central Tennessee into Kentucky. Um, it's just unreal. Uh, I've never seen it this high over such a big area. You see what's going on here. This all points to a mess. I mean, it's just going to be a mess as far as the amount of wind shear that is, is in place. And with the heating of the day going on now across the deep south and along this line, you're going to see uh, probably some significant tornadoes, if not uh, EF3, 4, 5s today. Let's look at the water vapor loop because I think this is going to show you the amount of energy coming in. There's a strong jet streak, which is now over Texas that's diving into this area so this will energize the storms even more later this afternoon um, really setting the stage for the worst is yet to come which seems almost hard to imagine you know especially what's going on this morning when you look at the 500 millibar vorticity um, you can see we've got this strong vort which is going to rotate out of Colorado move into areas 
of the Deep South as well. So you throw in all these factors. Let's look at the 300 millibar winds. Um, and I think you'll see what I'm talking about here when I turn on the 300 millibar. This, these are the jet stream winds. You see these white arrows here? Uh, those are those are wind speeds in an excess of 125 knots. And in some cases, it's approaching 150 knots. And you can see, I'll put the heights on here. You can see how at the jet stream level, you see how these lines are separating here. We're getting a lot of difluence aloft. So overall, I mean, what, what does all this mean? This basically means we're in store for an historic tornado outbreak today in areas uh, across Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia possibly the Western Carolinas, and we'll have to watch the Ohio Valley as well as we're seeing these lines develop here in Illinois down into Missouri. They're starting to show signs of rotation. So it doesn't really matter where you live today in the east. You need to be prepared for, for severe weather. The time frame is basically all afternoon into the evening in areas west of the mountains. The mountains, watch out this evening and then in and around Charlotte and eastern North Carolina. It's going to be overnight tonight and even into tomorrow during the day. Quick check of the radar in our area. Um, you see not much going on now with the warm front now getting pretty well established to the north. But if we go over here into Tennessee, these storms have just been unreal. Uh, this one storm has produced a long track tornado going all the way back to north of, of Huntsville and Limestone and Madison counties strong storms developing in eastern uh, Tennessee, uh, new storms developing in northeastern Tennessee, so the Tri-Cities, Bristol area, you're going to have to be on guard, and eventually southwestern parts of, of Virginia in this area. This area has been pretty active already today. So that's the latest right now. I'm going to be on it all afternoon. Remember, if you have friends or family in this area, please share my Facebook post earlier about making sure they're prepared. You need to always prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Um, I don't like to overwarn or hype things too much, but this is one of those situations where I don't think we can give enough emphasis to how severe this is going to be. This is not your typical severe weather event where we get quick spin-ups and a lot of us are impacted. If you end up being in the path of one of these storms, it's not going to be a little storm. It's going to be huge. So I want you to be prepared. We'll have continuous updates online at WCNC.com, on my Twitter and Facebook pages, as well as on air. Remember, we're on at 4, 5, 6, and 11. Remember who's looking out for you. It's me. So make sure you tune in for the latest on this situation. And make sure your friends and family know they don't watch TV. They're not on Facebook. They're not on Twitter. Whatever source of information they have, make sure they're hearing from you because you telling them has a much bigger impact than some strangers. So make sure you let them know this is the real deal.